NASA has always been at the forefront of space exploration, but its recent announcement has sent shockwaves through the scientific community. Voyager 1, the farthest human-made object from Earth, has made a discovery so astonishing that NASA had to shut down its transmission. But what could be so groundbreaking that NASA would take such drastic action? Could it be evidence of extraterrestrial life, a new understanding of the laws of physics, or perhaps something even more mind-boggling? Join us in this exploration as NASA warns that Voyager 1 has made an impossible discovery before shutting it down. The Lunch of Voyager Probe The eagerly anticipated launch day for Voyager 1 arrived at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida, but a technical hiccup with the rocket's guidance system caused a nerve-wracking delay of two weeks. Finally, on September 5, 1977, Voyager 1 embarked on its historic journey, soaring into the sky atop a Titan 3E Centaur rocket. As it bid farewell to Earth, Voyager 1 embarked on a mission requiring incredible speed, opting for a shorter, swifter path compared to its twin, Voyager 2, which had launched just two weeks prior. Tasked with the monumental mission of unraveling the mysteries of our solar system, the Voyager probe surpassed all expectations, venturing into uncharted realms of the cosmos. Voyager 1, in particular, embarked on an extraordinary odyssey that continues to astonish NASA and the global scientific community to this day. Despite initial projections limiting its lifespan to a mere five years, Voyager defied the odds, persisting through the decades. This enduring saga of exploration speaks volumes about the remarkable craftsmanship and innovation behind the Voyager spacecraft. Crafted with cutting-edge technology ahead of its time, Voyager 1 and its counterpart Voyager 2 were marvels of engineering. Every component, from the engines to the antennas, was meticulously designed for longevity and efficiency. Drawing inspiration from the Mariner spacecraft, NASA engineers implemented a series of ingenious modifications, equipping Voyager 1 with an array of sophisticated scientific instruments. These instruments, numbering 11 in total, included the likes of ultraviolet spectrometers, cosmic ray detectors, magnetometers, and high-resolution imaging systems. With such advanced tools at its disposal, Voyager 1 embarked on a comprehensive exploration of the celestial bodies and phenomena within our cosmic neighborhood. From planets to stars, planetary rings to magnetic fields, Voyager delved into the intricacies of space with unparalleled precision. Yet, Voyager 1's significance extends beyond scientific inquiry. In a symbolic gesture of human curiosity and outreach, NASA included a golden record aboard Voyager 1, bearing a compendium of Earth's cultural and scientific heritage. This gesture, intended as a message to potential extraterrestrial civilizations, underscores the collaborative effort of countless creative minds, including that of Gary Flandro, whose contributions were integral to Voyager's success. The Slingshot Effect Gary Flandro, an unsung hero of NASA's space exploration endeavors, played a pivotal role in shaping the trajectory of the iconic Voyager 1 spacecraft. His contributions, though often overlooked, were instrumental in the success of the Voyager missions. Flandro's journey with NASA began in the mid-60s at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, JPL, where he made a groundbreaking discovery that would change the course of space exploration history. During his time at JPL, Flandro identified a rare planetary alignment involving Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, set to occur in the late 1970s and early 1980s. This celestial phenomenon, occurring once every 175 years, presented a unique opportunity for spacecraft to utilize gravitational assists. Gravitational assist, also known as the slingshot effect, involves a spacecraft harnessing the gravitational pull of a planet to increase its velocity and alter its trajectory. By carefully plotting the spacecraft's trajectory, engineers can use this effect to send it on long journeys through space with minimal fuel consumption. Recognizing the potential of this planetary alignment, Flandro proposed an ambitious Grand Tour mission. This mission would leverage gravitational assists to send a spacecraft on a journey through the solar system, allowing it to fly by each of the outer planets in succession. The trajectory Flandro proposed would enable the spacecraft to gather valuable data as it passed each planet, 
transmitting this information back to Earth. This groundbreaking concept revolutionized space exploration, enabling missions like Voyager to traverse vast distances with unprecedented efficiency. Flandro's discovery sparked a revolution in space exploration, promising unparalleled insights into the outer reaches of our solar system. Not only did his proposal offer the prospect of gathering groundbreaking data about distant planets, it also promised to accomplish this feat in a fraction of the time it would take using traditional methods. By capitalizing on gravitational assists, the mission could conserve precious fuel resources, making it feasible with the technology available at the time. However, with great potential came great challenges. Crafting a trajectory to exploit gravitational assists from multiple planets demanded pinpoint precision in calculations and timing. The spacecraft had to arrive at each planetary rendezvous with impeccable accuracy, poised to receive the gravitational boosts necessary to propel it onward. Any deviation from the meticulously planned course or technical malfunction could spell disaster for the mission. Additionally, the vast expanses of space presented formidable obstacles to communication and data transmission. To overcome these hurdles, the spacecraft needed to be equipped with state-of-the-art instruments capable of enduring the harsh conditions of deep space and transmitting data across billions of miles. But despite these daunting challenges, Flandro's proposal ignited a spark of enthusiasm within NASA. The scientific rewards promised by the Grand Tour mission were simply too tantalizing to overlook. However, faced with budget constraints and the formidable technical hurdles ahead, NASA opted to modify the mission's scope. Instead of a single spacecraft embarking on the ambitious Grand Tour, the agency launched two remarkable vessels, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. While Voyager 1 set its sights on Jupiter and Saturn, Voyager 2 aimed even further, with plans to explore Uranus and Neptune if its earlier objectives proved successful. This strategic adaptation allowed NASA to maximize scientific exploration within the constraints of resources and technology. Unveiling Jupiter's Secrets By November 1977, Voyager 1 had effortlessly navigated through the asteroid belt, encountering no obstacles. However, the most thrilling chapter of its journey unfolded in April 1978, when Voyager 2 began its close observation of Jupiter from a staggering distance of 165 million miles away. The climax of this encounter occurred on March 5, 1979, as Voyager 1 executed its closest pass, coming within a mere 217,000 miles of Jupiter's swirling clouds. This milestone marked Voyager 1 as the second spacecraft ever to venture so close to Jupiter, yet its significance transcended mere precedence. Voyager 1 blazed a trail of discovery, unveiling Jupiter's hidden treasures. During its flyby, Voyager 1 made a series of startling revelations. It uncovered a previously undetected, elusive, thin ring encircling Jupiter. Composed of dusty remnants from the planet's inner moons, this ring, less than 19 miles thick, orbited roughly 50,000 miles from Jupiter's core. Moreover, Voyager 1's keen eyes detected two newfound moons, Thebe and Metis, frolicking within this ring. These moons, characterized by their modest size and peculiar shapes, added to the celestial spectacle. Voyager 1's exploration of Jupiter yielded yet another remarkable discovery, the fiery activity on Io, one of Jupiter's moons. Jupiter, the largest planet in our solar system, boasts an impressive entourage of 79 known satellites, some of these moons orbit closely to the gas giant, nestled within its magnificent rings. However, the most renowned among Jupiter's moons are the four mighty Galilean moons, named after the famed astronomer Galileo, who first observed them in 1610. Exploring Jupiter's enigmatic moons and Io's mysteries. The Voyager missions especially spent a lot of time around Jupiter and sent back a ton of information on this planet to NASA. As Voyager 1 embarked on its journey through space and towards Jupiter, it hurtled past Jupiter's shimmering rings before finally arriving at the quartet of Galilean moons, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. These moons stand out as celestial giants, each possessing unique characteristics and mysteries waiting to be unraveled. Io, the innermost of the Galilean moons, performs a mesmerizing dance close to Jupiter, 
hovering nearly 350,000 kilometers above the gas giant's swirling clouds. From Io's surface, Jupiter would loom large in the sky, appearing an astonishing 39 times larger than our moon. However, Io's proximity to its colossal parent planet comes at a cost, as its orbit is a peculiarly rapid one, completing a revolution around Jupiter in a mere 42.5 hours. This stark contrast to the monthly orbit of Earth's moon adds to Io's mystique. What makes Io's orbit even more fascinating is its synchronization with its neighboring moons, a phenomenon known as orbital resonance. For every orbit of Europa, Io completes two, and for every orbit of Ganymede, it completes four. This gravitational interplay enhances Io's orbit, subjecting it to intense tidal forces that serve as a primary driver for its dramatic geological activity. When Voyager 1 approached Io, getting as close as a mere 2,000 kilometers away, it captured stunning images of Io's surface, revealing the moon's turbulent and volcanic nature. Voyager 1's encounter with Io unveiled a world of wonders that defied expectations. Instead of the barren, cratered landscape typically associated with moons, Io's surface dazzled with vibrant hues, devoid of any telltale signs of impact. Towering mountains, rivaling the height of Mount Everest, punctuated the landscape, while vast volcanic pits, stretching hundreds of kilometers wide, testified to the moon's tumultuous volcanic history. Lava, frozen in time, flowed across the terrain, weaving a tale of Io's fiery past. Among the most astonishing discoveries was the presence of plumes erupting from Io's surface. This groundbreaking observation provided irrefutable evidence of Io's volcanic activity, establishing it as the first and only place in our solar system, apart from Earth, where such activity has been visibly observed. Voyager 1 also revealed that Io's surface is coated with various sulfur frosts, creating a mesmerizing mosaic of colors. Another captivating feature of Io is the absence of typical volcanic calderas. Instead, large lava lakes surrounded by steep walls serve as the primary sources of volcanic activity. The largest of these lakes, Loki, spans an impressive 200 kilometers in diameter. Covered by a thin crust, these lava lakes are directly linked to subsurface lava reservoirs. Loki, in particular, is a dynamic entity, significantly contributing to Io's heat output. While it typically produces a quarter of the planet's heat, occasionally the crust on its lava lake collapses, resulting in a tenfold increase in heat production. Such phenomena underscore the dynamic and intriguing nature of Io, a world shaped by the powerful forces of volcanic activity amidst the vastness of space. Voyager 1's epic journey toward Saturn. Voyager 1's journey also brought it face to face with Jupiter's intense radiation belts, a result of the planet's strong magnetic field interacting with solar winds. These belts are filled with energetic particles that can pose a danger to spacecraft and future missions. In addition, Voyager 1 detected lightning and auroras in Jupiter's atmosphere, along with radio emissions that change with the planet's rotation. These emissions are caused by electrons swirling along magnetic field lines and interacting with plasma in Jupiter's magnetosphere. Voyager 1's revelations extended beyond Jupiter, hinting at the mysteries awaiting exploration at Saturn. Departing from Jupiter, Voyager 1 set its course for Saturn, its next cosmic destination, leaving a trail of awe-inspiring discoveries in its wake. On November 12, 1980, Voyager 1 reached Saturn, passing by the planet at a distance of approximately 124,000 kilometers. During its journey, Voyager 1 also flew by Saturn's largest moon, Titan, coming within about 6,490 kilometers. This historic encounter marked the first time a spacecraft had studied Titan's thick atmosphere up close, revealing valuable insights into this puzzling moon. While Voyager 1 was the second spacecraft to visit Saturn after Pioneer 11, it distinguished itself by uncovering a plethora of secrets and surprises. Voyager 1's flyby of Saturn on November 12, 1980, provided a wealth of groundbreaking discoveries and observations that revolutionized our understanding of the ringed planet and its moons. One of the most captivating revelations 
was the discovery of a new ring around Saturn, known as the G-Ring. This ring, previously invisible from Earth, is composed of tiny particles likely ejected from the inner moons due to meteoroid impacts. The G-Ring is characterized by its faint and narrow structure with a width of approximately 7,500 kilometers and an inner edge located about 167,000 kilometers from Saturn's center. Unveiling Saturn's Hidden World Voyager 1 unveiled five previously unknown moons orbiting within or near Saturn's rings when it came within close contact of the giant planet. These moons, Prometheus, Pandora, Atlas, Epimetheus, and Janus, are small and irregularly shaped and play a crucial role in maintaining the shape and stability of the rings through their gravitational influence. They are aptly named shepherd moons for their role in shepherding the particles within the rings. Another significant discovery made by Voyager 1 was the intricate structure and dynamics of Saturn's rings. Comprising billions of ice and rock particles ranging in size from dust grains to boulders, Saturn's rings exhibit a complex and fascinating interplay of forces. Voyager 1's observations shed light on the dynamic processes shaping these rings, providing valuable insights into the evolution of Saturn's ring system over time. Voyager 1's exploration of Saturn's rings revealed a dynamic and diverse landscape, challenging the notion of uniformity. Instead of a monotonous ring structure, Voyager 1 discovered gaps, waves, braids, spokes, and kinks, all of which are the result of complex interactions between the ring particles and the moons orbiting Saturn. For instance, the spacecraft observed a prominent gap in the A-ring, caused by the orbital resonance with the moon Mimas. This resonance creates a gravitational tug-of-war that clears out a specific region within the ring. Additionally, Voyager 1 noticed a distinctive wave pattern in the B-ring, resulting from the orbital resonance with the moon Janus. These intricate patterns underscore the dynamic nature of Saturn's rings, shaped by the gravitational interactions with its moons. Moreover, Voyager 1 detected transient features known as spokes in the B-ring. These spokes are believed to be caused by the electrostatic charging of the ring particles by lightning in Saturn's atmosphere. These mysterious features, though ephemeral, add to the mysteries of Saturn's rings. Beyond the rings, Voyager 1 delved into the mysteries of Saturn's magnetic field and magnetosphere. Saturn's magnetic field, similar to Earth's but much stronger and more tilted, is generated by the planet's rotation and its interaction with the solar wind. The magnetosphere of Saturn, a vast region of space surrounding the planet and extending beyond its rings, contains plasma particles originating from Saturn's atmosphere, rings, and moons. Voyager 1 detected auroras and radio emissions from Saturn, along with plasma waves and energetic particles in its magnetosphere, shedding light on the intricate interplay of forces in Saturn's magnetic environment. Voyager 1 also provided valuable insights into Saturn's diverse moon system, including Titan, Enceladus, Mimas, Tethys, Dione, Rhea, Hyperion, Iapetus, and Phoebe. Voyager 1's observations revealed that Titan possesses a thick atmosphere of nitrogen and methane, making it the only moon in the solar system with a substantial atmosphere. Enceladus, with its smooth and bright surface, indicated geological activity and possibly a subsurface ocean of liquid water. Mimas stood out with its massive Herschel crater, covering a third of its diameter. At the same time, Iapetus displayed a stark contrast between its dark and bright hemispheres, adding to the allure of Saturn's moon system, the mysterious glitch and breakthrough. On February 17, 1998, Voyager 1 achieved a monumental feat, surpassing NASA's Pioneer 10 as the most distant human-made object from Earth. This historic milestone marked a momentous leap in humanity's exploration of the cosmos. By August 16, 2006, Voyager 1 had traversed a staggering 100 astronomical units from the Sun, a significant distance that symbolized its journey into interstellar space. Despite its immense distance from Earth, Voyager 1 defied the odds, maintaining communication with its home planet. Situated approximately 15 billion kilometers from the Sun, Voyager 1 became a beacon of human achievement, transmitting valuable data back to Earth across the vast expanse of space. 
As Voyager 1 ventured further into the cosmos, its distance from Earth continued to expand, currently hovering around 24 billion kilometers away. Crossing the heliopause and entering interstellar space marked a historic moment in human exploration, showcasing the enduring legacy of Voyager 1's mission. However, in recent months, Voyager 1's transmissions have baffled scientists and engineers at NASA. Instead of the expected data stream, Voyager 1's messages have become a cosmic conundrum, resembling an indecipherable stream of ones and zeros. It seemed as though Voyager had encountered a communication breakdown, struggling to convey its observations in Earth's language. The root of this sudden silence appeared to stem from a glitch between Voyager's flight data system, FDS, and its telemetry modulation unit, TMU. These critical components, serving as the heart and voice of Voyager, gather data from the depths of space and transmit it back to Earth. Yet, a mysterious malfunction disrupted this vital communication link, leaving scientists puzzled and eager to decipher the anomaly. Voyager 1's cryptic signal. The anomaly discovered in Voyager 1's transmissions presented a perplexing challenge for NASA. This was especially as the space agency quickly needed to transform valuable scientific data into a repeating binary pattern similar to a cryptic echo to avoid losing this data forever. Rather than clear and decipherable information, the spacecraft seemed to be sending a mysterious signal back to Earth. In response, NASA's engineers demonstrated a blend of patience and ingenuity. They devised a strategy known as a poke, a command intended to gently nudge the spacecraft's data system to reroute its internal processes. By encouraging Voyager to try different sequences in its software package, they aimed to bypass the corrupted section causing the glitch. This poke wasn't merely a technical maneuver, it symbolized a message of hope, an attempt to re-establish the connection with humanity's distant messenger. After months of silence, Voyager 1 responded with a faint but meaningful signal. On March 3rd, engineers at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory received a transmission unlike any other in recent memory. Instead of the usual data stream, they received a detailed readout of Voyager's entire flight data system memory. This unexpected signal was similar to receiving a letter in a forgotten language containing secrets crucial to saving a mission teetering on the edge of silence. It was a beacon of hope in the cosmic void, indicating that Voyager 1 was still operational and responsive to commands. The spacecraft's response was the result of a carefully crafted command, designed to coax out a new kind of message. By instructing Voyager to shuffle through its software sequences, engineers successfully skirted around the glitch, enabling the spacecraft to transmit critical data about its current status. This breakthrough was monumental because it provided engineers with a direct insight into Voyager's brain, allowing them to compare the fresh memory dump with previous ones. This comparison was crucial in pinpointing the anomaly and guiding engineers towards crafting a precise solution. Now, it's time for today's subscriber pick. In a surprising turn of events, NASA has warned that Voyager 1 has made an impossible discovery just before it shut down. This spacecraft, launched in 1977, was on a mission to study the outer reaches of our solar system and beyond. In its final moments of communication, Voyager 1 sent back data that baffled NASA scientists. It detected a strange anomaly, a signal that seemed to originate from outside our galaxy. This finding was deemed impossible because Voyager 1 was not equipped to detect signals from such vast distances. Before NASA could investigate further, Voyager 1's fuel supply ran out, leaving it adrift in the cosmic sea. Despite its silence, Voyager 1's discovery sparked a new wave of excitement and curiosity among scientists. What exactly could this signal mean? Or was it only a cosmic coincidence? Let us know your thoughts in the comment below. Voyager 1, and its interstellar space challenges. Deciphering the signal from Voyager and fixing the glitch is like trying to find a tiny needle in a massive haystack. But here's the catch. This haystack isn't just huge, it's more than 15 billion miles away. Despite being so far and having journeyed for so long, Voyager 1 still manages to send messages back to Earth. How is this even possible? Well, it's all thanks to the satellites and the deep space networks. DSN radio communication system. 
Voyager 1's radio system includes a 3.7-meter diameter high-gain antenna. This antenna can both send and receive radio waves through the three DSN stations on Earth. Mounted on a platform that can rotate and point in any direction in space, the antenna is crucial for maintaining contact with the spacecraft. The antenna uses two different frequency bands for communication, the S-band, with a wavelength of about 13 centimeters, and the X-band, with a wavelength of about 3.6 centimeters. The S-band is primarily used for sending commands and engineering data, while the X-band is reserved for transmitting scientific data and images back to Earth. The DSN is a network of large radio antennas located in different parts of the world, including Canberra, Australia, Madrid, Spain, and Goldstone, California. These locations are strategically chosen and spaced around the planet so that at least one site always has a clear view of Voyager 1 as Earth rotates. Each site is equipped with several antennas, with the largest being 70 meters in diameter. This enormous size is necessary to detect the incredibly weak signals sent by Voyager 1, which are about 20 billion times weaker than what's needed to power a digital watch. Despite the incredible technology and coordination involved, communication between Voyager 1 and Earth is not instantaneous. Because radio signals travel at the speed of light, about 300,000 kilometers per second, there's still a delay depending on the distance between the spacecraft and Earth. Voyager 1, a spacecraft launched by NASA, is now incredibly far from Earth. It's so distant that it takes a whopping 21 hours for a signal to travel from Voyager 1 to Earth or vice versa. Imagine sending a message to a friend, but they only receive it the next day. This delay means that when NASA sends a command to Voyager 1, it must patiently wait for 21 hours to receive confirmation that the command was successfully executed. Similarly, when Voyager 1 sends back data or images to Earth, it takes another 21 hours for NASA to receive them. Navigating the depths of interstellar communication. The communication between Voyager 1 and Earth isn't continuous. It depends on various factors like power availability, data rate, antenna pointing accuracy, and interference from other sources. Voyager 1 generates power using radioisotope thermoelectric generators, RTGs, but these decay over time. So it must carefully prioritize which instruments and systems to operate at any given time to conserve energy. As Voyager 1 moves farther away from Earth, the data rate decreases because the signal weakens with distance. Even a slight deviation in the antenna's pointing accuracy can result in a loss of signal, highlighting the precision required for communication. In addition, interference from sources like the Sun, other planets or other spacecraft can disrupt communication. Despite these challenges, Voyager 1 continues to send valuable information and pictures back to Earth using its radio communication system and the Deep Space Network DSN. It also receives commands and updates from Earth to ensure its proper functioning. This communication between Voyager 1 and Earth showcases human ingenuity and curiosity. The enduring partnership between Voyager 1 and NASA has now lasted for more than four decades. But what exactly is happening to Voyager 1 in interstellar space? The mystery continues to unfold as Voyager 1 ventures into the unknown. Meanwhile, interstellar space isn't just an empty void between stars in a galaxy. It's filled with different types of matter and energy, including gas, dust, cosmic rays, neutrinos, photons, and dark matter. However, these components are spread out thinly, making interstellar space almost like a perfect vacuum. One way to define the boundary of interstellar space is by looking at the influence of the Sun and other stars on their surroundings. The Sun emits a constant stream of charged particles and magnetic fields known as the solar wind which forms a large bubble around the solar system called the heliosphere. This bubble acts as a shield, protecting the planets from most interstellar radiation and particles. The heliosphere extends to about 122 astronomical units, AU from the Sun, with one AU being the average distance between Earth and the Sun. At the edge of the heliosphere, the solar wind meets the interstellar medium, ISM, which is the matter and energy filling interstellar space. The ISM exerts pressure on the heliosphere, creating a shock wave called the termination shock. This shock wave marks the beginning of a turbulent region called the heliosheath, where the solar wind mixes with the ISM 
becoming hotter and denser. The outer boundary of the helio sheath is called the heliopause, which marks the end of the sun's influence, Voyager 1's quest into true interstellar space. Now beyond the heliopause lies true interstellar space, where the ISM dominates over the solar wind. Voyager 1's primary mission was to reach interstellar space and study its characteristics. However, determining when it crossed the heliopause was challenging because there was no clear sign of this transition. Voyager 1 had to rely on its instruments to measure various parameters, such as plasma density, magnetic field strength and direction, cosmic ray intensity, and plasma waves. The first indication that Voyager 1 was nearing interstellar space came on May 2012, when it detected a sudden increase in cosmic rays. These high-energy particles from outside the solar system suggested that Voyager 1 was leaving the protective bubble of the heliosphere and entering a region where cosmic rays were more abundant. The second clue came in June 2012, when Voyager 1 picked up on a decrease in solar wind particles, suggesting that it was moving away from the source of these particles. However, this wasn't enough evidence to confirm its entry into interstellar space, as other factors could affect the density of the solar wind. The real breakthrough came on August 2012, when Voyager 1 noticed a significant change in plasma density and the direction of the magnetic field. Plasma, a gas made up of charged particles, can carry electric currents and generate magnetic fields. Voyager 1 measured plasma density using its plasma wave instrument, PWS, which detects vibrations in plasma caused by various phenomena. On August 25, 2012, the third and final indication when Voyager 1 observed a sharp increase in plasma density from about 0.002 per cubic cm to about 0.08 per cubic cm. This jump indicated that Voyager 1 had crossed into a region where the plasma was much denser than in the heliosphere. Additionally, Voyager 1 measured magnetic field strength and direction using its magnetometer, MAG, which detects changes in magnetic fields caused by electric currents or moving charges. On the same day, Voyager 1 recorded a change in magnetic field direction by about 20 degrees. This change indicated that Voyager 1 had entered a region where magnetic fields were oriented differently than inside the heliosphere. These two measurements together confirmed Voyager 1's historic entry into interstellar space. However, confirming this milestone wasn't immediate. Due to its immense distance from Earth, it took about 17 hours for Voyager 1's signals to reach us. Moreover, it took several months for scientists to analyze and verify Voyager 1's data before announcing this achievement to the public in September 2013. Despite this incredible journey, Communication with Voyager 1 won't last forever, its fuel supply is limited, and it's expected to run out by 2025. At that point, Voyager 1 will have to turn off its radio transmitter and go silent, drifting through the galaxy. Nonetheless, it will continue to carry a golden record containing sounds and images of Earth, serving as a message to any potential extraterrestrial intelligence it might encounter. Do you think Voyager 1 could eventually live over 2025? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below.